Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Peter. I, uh, I work with Community Living Campaign, which is a nonprofit here in San Francisco um, that helps seniors and adults with disabilities. Um, my program uh, within Community Living Campaign is called Neighborhood Tech Connect, um, and we focus on tech and internet access for those communities. Um, and we have been teaching a lot of different classes online like this. Um, and I teach a, a Zoom class and I put together these materials under the frame of job interviewing, knowing that especially now um, when we're, you know, unsure of how long this sort of, um, you know, social distancing is going to be having to go on for, um, job interviewing is probably going to be virtual for, I mean, it's it's already been like a lot of people have used um, platforms like Zoom to do job interviewing over a, a virtual space so that you're far apart. Um, but now, especially, it's going to be used a lot more. Um, so that's why we put together these materials to, to make sure that um, everybody's just prepared and they know what it's going to be like when they're going to be using this. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and this is just showing today's goals. Um, so I'm going to talk about, you know, Zoom itself, um, you know, in a general sense real quick. Um, talk about uh, choosing the right platform for you, which really just means the right type of device, you know, depending on what you have and what you're comfortable with. Um, and then we're going to talk about the process of signing in to a Zoom meeting. Um, and then a little bit of audio and video of how to turn on and off your microphone uh, or your camera. Um, a little Zoom etiquette, um, you know, do's and don'ts and what to expect. Uh, and then a talk about uh, virtual backgrounds how to turn one on and you know should you turn one on for an interview is it appropriate uh and then we'll just end with you know more ways that you can find help and keep learning um there we go so what is zoom um it's a way to meet virtually with multiple people at once from a distance um much like other video calling softwares but with zoom it's uh, really easy to have, you know, a, a meeting like this where there's a bunch of us here now and we're able to sit through this presentation and uh, communicate with each other. Um, it's available, Zoom itself is available on multiple platforms. And like I said earlier, that really just means that there's different ways for you to get in to a Zoom meeting. Um, you can call using a, like a landline phone or a cell phone, any kind of phone that you can make phone calls with, um, you would dial that phone number on your screen, or at least that's the toll free number uh, for Zoom. Um, so it, uh, if you can't see it on your screen right now, it's 888-475-4499. And that phone number, um, is basically the the phone number that you would call where you're going into a zoom meeting and then you would hear an automated voice that would ask you to <clears throat> type in the meeting id number uh, and that would be provided to you by the interviewer they would say you know this is the zoom meeting that uh we're meeting under um so you would have that number beforehand uh you would type in that number and then you'd have to hit pound uh in order to then come into the meeting uh, if there's a password, the interviewer would also give you the password, and then you'd have to type in the password after that and hit pound again. Um, but sometimes there is no password. So that's just the if there was. Um, then when it says computer web browser, that means um, if you're using a computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop computer, um, you can use the Zoom website in order to join a meeting. Um, when you go to the Zoom website, <clears throat> sorry, website, it's a uh, zoom.us, like United States, US. So again, zoom.us. And when you go to the website, you'll see there's gonna be a little uh, 
tab that says join a meeting. And if you click on that, you'll then be asked again, what's the meeting ID number? And you would type that in and you'd be able to join the meeting uh, through the Zoom website without having to download anything or, or create an account. You can just join a meeting through the website. Um, but again, that's only available on a computer. You can't do that on a tablet or a smartphone. You would have to do that on a computer. It's just the way that it's built. Um, then it says Zoom desktop software. That just means that you're on a computer and you've actually downloaded the Zoom software into your device. Um, and then the final one is a tablet or a smartphone, which is basically the same thing. You've downloaded the Zoom app onto your device. Um, for an interview, I recommend choosing whatever, whatever platform that you are most comfortable using. Um, an interviewer might not request uh, calling in by phone as being an option only because they want to actually see you. Um, but if you, for some reason, you know, don't have a device where you have a camera on it or um, the, uh, the device you're using is having some kind of technical issue, something like that, I'm sure that as long as you're able to be a part of the interview, they'll be happy to hear you. But just know that they might request that you use something with a camera. So you might have to do one of these other three options. The first one might not be allowed for an interview. Uh, this here is an example of the steps on what it would look like when you're joining uh, a Zoom meeting on a tablet. Same thing for a smartphone. It might be shaped slightly differently. It's not going to be exactly the same. Um, but this is the, um, the sort of breakdown of a typical step-by-step -step process. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just so you get a, a better sense of what it will look like. You see step one, this is after you've opened the Zoom app on your tablet. So you've already downloaded the app from the, if it's a, a an iPad, it would be from the App Store. Uh, if you're on some kind of Android device, it's probably from the Google Play Store. And after it's downloaded and you've opened it, it'll look something like this. And you'll see there's an option for join a meeting. When you click on that, a window like this will pop up. And then you're able to type in the meeting ID number. Again, the interviewer would have given you that. And you can type in your name so that once you jump in, uh, your name is already displayed for the, the interviewer to see. Um, and then you can click join. Down here, you also have some options where you can uh, automatically, you know, you might not want your audio to connect. I don't recommend having that turned on for an interview. Um, I would say switch this off, so not green like the image is showing, but switch the other way so it's gray. Um, and I mean, depending on if you're ready, you might want to say, you know, turn off my video so that you will manually turn on your camera yourself when you're ready to be seen. Um, but just know for an interview, they probably want to see your face. So you're going to be asked to <clears throat> turn on your camera. Um, the next step, if there is a password, you're going to have to type that in and then press continue. That's only if a password is required. Not every Zoom meeting is going to have a password, um, but just know that if your interviewer tells you, oh, we put a password on it, here's the password, this is the, the point in which you would type that in. Um, after you type in the password, or if um, there is no password, you would then go to the step four, which is registration. This is another optional one. It might not be there, but it potentially will pop up. Um, and for this particular uh, course, you had to 
register first before you were able to come in today. So you might have seen something similar when you were trying to join for today. Um, after you fill it out and you click OK, you would then go to step five, which is where you're actually in what's called a waiting room and you're just waiting for the, uh, the host to let you in once they're ready. And the host also has the ability to send you a little message um, while you're waiting. For example, if um, they're running a little late for some reason because of a technical difficulty um, or, or just, you know, there, there's some information they're trying to let you know about. Um, you won't be able to respond back. So the, the host would never send you a question while you're in there in the waiting room, um, but they will give you some information while you're waiting. Um, so yeah, that's the step-by-step. -step. And again, remember that step three and step four are both optional. So you may end up going from one, two, straight to five, depending on if a password or if registration has been turned on by the host of that particular uh, meeting, and in this case, for that interview. Uh, interviews probably, I mean, and I guess I can't really promise you what, one way or the other, but I, I imagine registration isn't gonna be something you're gonna run into a lot for an interview, but um, you'll you know, just know that it is possible. Uh, and then here, you'll see this is the same examples, but for a computer. And I'm just gonna go back and forth for a second just to emphasize that, as you see here, it's the same exact five steps. It's just looking different because here is a tablet and then here is a computer. So I'll, I'll go through this quickly because it is, again, the same five steps. It's just on a computer when you open the Zoom software. So this is, again, assuming that you've downloaded the Zoom software into your computer. You would open the Zoom software. It would look something like this. Click Join a Meeting meeting id number you would type in there you can type in your name same options here again where you can check them off or not have them checked on then you would click join if there's a password again you would type in the password but there might not be a password so then you would go straight to step four and again that's if they've required registration and you would fill out that registration and you would click join at the bottom and then you would be in the waiting room. And again, there might be a message that they send you while you're in the waiting room, but you can always test your audio. Um, so it would send like a little high pitch ping, um, you know, in your, uh, your device to, to make sure that the audio is working in the device before you join. This is what it may look like if you join a little early, um, I would say try not to, to sign in exceptionally early. I know usually the rule of thumb for an interview is to try to arrive at the location like in that sweet spot. You want to be early, but you don't want to be like crazy early. So it's usually something like 15 to 10 minutes early. With a Zoom meeting, because you're not even... You're not, you know, getting to a, a location. You're just logging in on your device. Um, you do want to make sure you're early, but I would just shrink that time a little bit. You don't necessarily have to arrive 15 minutes early for a, a Zoom interview, but try to, to sign in within that 10 to 5 minute range so that just in case you know, with all of these steps, if you get delayed, you're still going to be in the meeting before the scheduled time, but you're not arriving, like I said, like 15 minutes early, because then you're, you're actually just sitting in front of a, a device. Um, so, but just make sure that you're arriving early, uh, no matter what. Uh, that's always important for an interview. <laughs> Uh, and again, even if you do arrive early, you have, again, that option to test your audio. And that just sends little high pitch pings. Um, the message here might look different. This is an example um, using uh, the Community Living Campaign 
Zoom accounts. So this is a message that some of our participants might see if they arrived a little too early for one of our activities. But your interviewer might have some kind of other message here saying, you know, this is a, a meeting from, you know, and it might have the name of the, the company that you're interviewing for. Um, this is a more close up example of that waiting room that I was talking about before. So again, this is just emphasizing what it might look like. You could always test your speaker. And then here is where the message might pop up, letting you know that you know, they're, they're going to let you in shortly. They might be waiting for one of the, the other, like if it's a group of people who are interviewing you, maybe one of the people is late. So they're waiting for one of those other people to show up before they officially let you in to start the interview. Um, so little things like that might delay the interview. So look out for messages. Um, this is just showing um, what it would look like once you're in the interview itself. Um, you would want to be able to mute and unmute yourself. Um, if you aren't familiar with this already, when you're unmuted, meaning people can hear you and you can hear them, uh, your icon is going to look like just a gray uh, microphone symbol. I'm going to zoom in on it so you see what I'm talking about. Um, so if you see just a gray microphone symbol like this, that means you are unmuted. Anything you say or any noises around you will be heard by the people in the Zoom meeting. If you want to mute yourself, you would click on that icon and then you would see the red line going through it. And that means you are now muted. And now no matter what noises are happening in the room, no one in the Zoom meeting will be able to, to hear them because you are now muted. Um, for an interview especially, you want to make sure that you're able to control what noises they hear. So I'll talk about etiquette in a little bit. But, um, but yeah, it's important to just make sure that you're um, aware of the mute button and uh, you know mute yourself when you want to make sure you're muted and unmute yourself when you want to be heard. Um, before I move on, again, if you're using the dial-in feature where you're just dialing in over a phone, um, to unmute yourself, you're going to dial star six. And then to just re-mute yourself and, and mute it again, you would dial star six again. So it's just a, a way of turning it on and off and on and off. You would just dial star six each time to turn it on or off. Uh, the same is just, I mean, this slide, this slide is showing you the same, but for the stop and start video button, which would be to turn on your, your camera. Um, again, you want to make sure for an interview, especially that they're able to see you. So it's that icon that has a little gray camera on it. I'll zoom in here. And if you see the camera looking like this, that means your camera is turned on and they should be able to see you. Um, if it looks like this with the red line through it, that means that it is now off and no one can see what's happening in your room. So you would have to click on this icon with the red line through it to then make it go back to this so that now your interviewer will be able to see you. Now, this slide here is showing you if your audio doesn't connect. Um, you know, I don't want you to, to panic, but sometimes be, just due to bad internet um, or just, you know, a hiccup in the software, the Zoom software, um, your, your audio might not connect automatically. It should usually, it'll just connect by itself. But sometimes this might happen to you. And if you ever see this icon, I'm going to zoom in on it here. This one here with the, the headphones, it's supposed to resemble like a headset that you put on to listen to music. Um, and it has a green arrow pointing up. If you ever see this icon, that is a red flag that um, something has gone wrong and your audio isn't connected. And you'll notice that you won't be able to hear anything 
and people in the meeting won't be able to hear you. Um, so you're going to have to click on this icon and then you'll be able to have the options on how to connect your audio. This icon will be in place of your mute button. So that button I was just showing you earlier with the uh, microphone symbol. Instead of a microphone, you're going to see this headset symbol in its place. Um, so you're going to have to click on this headset and then you'll get a pop-up window. And now this image over here is showing you two examples. Uh, I know there's a lot of arrows pointing around, so I'll explain what's happening. But these are just two examples. Um, the left is showing you on a tablet or a smartphone. Uh, the right is showing you what it'll look like on a computer. Um, if you are using a tablet or smartphone, the pop-up will look something like this. And you'll just have to click Internet Audio and uh, it should, or sorry, call using internet audio, um, and it should connect your microphone and speaker as normal. Uh, I know that the, the wording is a little confusing because it sounds like you're making a phone call. Um, I wish they phrased it a little differently, um, but this means that you're going to connect your microphone and speaker. Um, if you wanted to use one of these other options, like let's say the microphone and speaker just is not working for some reason, you're having a physical issue with them. You can click one of these other options and over here I explain what they do. So you would click dial in and you can um, receive a phone number, which is basically that phone number I gave you earlier. Um, and you can call so that you're able to do the dial in option where you're listening over your phone, but still watching what's happening on your other device. Um, that, or, and then the call my phone option is basically the same thing, except you're typing in your phone number, and then all you have to do is answer that phone call, and you'll be connected to the Zoom meeting um, to listen in and talk over the phone. Um, I recommend using that call my phone feature um, just because it's a little easier for the user. You just have to give them your phone number. Um, on a computer, same three options. It's just shaped differently. So the the join by your, your microphone and speakers like you normally would, it says it right here, join with computer audio, and you would click that. If that didn't work for some reason, um, you also have those other options. Phone call is, again, they give you that phone number um, to, to call in. Uh, call me is when you give them your phone number and they'll call you and you just answer the phone. Um, so these are great to know that um, basically if you're having a technical issue um, last minute right before an interview, you know that this is always an option for you. You, As long as you have, like, let's say, a tablet or a computer, as well as your landline phone or your uh, cell phone, you can use these call features to supplement your, your sound. And you're basically listening in and saying everything over the phone, but they're still able to see you uh, over the, the computer or over the tablet. Um, because this is a way, if you're having audio issues, which is usually the case. If you're having a camera issue, um, I recommend trying to restart your device completely. Usually a camera um, doesn't work properly because you might, have, um, you might have been leaving your device on for too long without turning it off completely in a long time. Um, so sometimes just restarting your device completely will help sort of refresh the system. Um, but unfortunately, that's really, when it comes to video, that's the only tech help I can give as far as video. But this is a great way that if you're having a tech issue with your audio to kind of get around it. So now we're going to get into some etiquette, talking about these do's or don'ts. Um, like I've been talking about earlier, most Zoom activities or Zoom meetings will have a waiting room. So there's that space that as after you typed in 
the meeting ID number and you filled out everything, if there is anything to fill out, um, and you're waiting to join, that's the waiting room. Uh, once you've been admitted, um, you will have the option to change your name um, that you have displayed. So if let's say you forgot to do it before, um, or you, you know, you only put in your first name and you realize you want to put in your full name, um, you can rename yourself um, by clicking on participants and then clicking the little next to your name, there'll be a blue button with three dots and it'll give you the option to rename. Or you can go to your, your little video square, you know, when you see uh, your little video square show up in the sort of like Brady Bunch style lineup of squares, you can click on the, the blue dots that it's gonna be in the top right corner of your video square and it should give you the option to rename. Um, the only reason why it might not be there is because the host does have the ability to um, to turn on and off your, uh, your ability to rename yourself. I imagine an interviewer probably would let you rename yourself. Um, so it should be possible, but just know that if it doesn't show up, it might just be because that particular interviewer turned on that security feature within Zoom. Um, another tip here uh, is be mindful of other participants' pronouns. Um, it's becoming um, a very, very commonplace uh, on Zoom to basically put your, uh, your pronouns in parentheses. Uh, so you'll see, you know, in the example here, she, her, he, him, they, them, or some kind of combination or whatnot. Um, so just be cognizant of that. Um, if you see pronouns listed next to somebody's name as they're talking, you know, be respectful of it. Uh, and then another dress to impress, um, at least from the waist up, um, because obviously if you're being viewed on Zoom, um, you really are only being viewed from the waist up unless you plan on standing for some reason during the interview. Um, so just make sure that, you know, your hair is put together, your face is put together, um, and that, yeah, you're wearing, you know, some kind of nice top, uh, at the very least. <laughs> uh, and then here is some Zoom audio etiquette. Um, most of the Zoom meetings will be set to automatically mute your microphone when you enter, um, and this is to ensure there isn't any background noises added to the meeting um, as more people join. Um, for uh, an interview, um, you might not have to necessarily worry about this because they're only expecting you to come in, but just know that when you join, you might be muted automatically and you're gonna have to unmute yourself in order to first be heard. Um, so just like I was showing you before, look for that red line going through the um, microphone symbol. If you see a red line, that means it's turned off. Um, it is good etiquette to stay muted unless you're speaking. Um, this again is just to ensure there's no background noise. So, um, you know, if something were to happen around you, um, you it wouldn't interrupt the person who's talking. Um, if you're on a computer, you can actually use the space bar on your keyboard like a walkie talkie to mute and unmute yourself. So if I were muted right now, I could hold down my space bar on my keyboard here and then I'd be able to, to say what I wanna say because I'd be unmuted. And then once I let go of the space bar, it would mute me again. So that's a way of instead of having to, you know, drag your mouse over to the button, click on it, say what you want to say, and then remember to go back and do it again so that you know no background noise gets interfering with the, the meeting, um, you can just do that sort of walkie-talkie thing. Um, just know that you have to hold down the space bar the entire time you're talking. Because once you let go, it's going to mute yourself again. Uh, and, and this is only available on a computer because um, you have to have a physical keyboard. Um, another tip is, and again, for the sake of background noise, find a quiet space. 
um, close all your windows, doors, televisions, radios, anything that may create any extra noise or distractions. Um, you know, if you have a pet, try to, you know, put them in another room if it's, if at all possible. I mean, I say that now and I have my cat in this room. Uh, thankfully, she's being quiet right now. <laughs> um, if you're experiencing any internet delay, like let's say you're noticing that there's a little bit of a lag happening um, and clearly the person on the other end is um, is hearing what you're saying, but a, like a second or two later wh than when you actually said it, um, then I uh, recommend that you try to, in your head, count to three before saying anything after someone uh, speaks, just so that you are not accidentally talking over each other. And the reason why I say that, in the parentheses at the bottom here, I kind of break down what happens with Zoom audio. Um, because we're all using microphones to speak to each other, the Zoom software is going to focus on whom whomever is speaking most recently. So um, as I'm talking, so let's say um, I'm person A, and as I'm talking and giving this little uh, presentation, somebody were to unmute themselves and start talking because they're the most recent person to talk, um, they would be amplified louder over me. Um, and then the audio kind of sounds garbled because you technically hear both of us, but one is amplified louder than the other. And if you add, you know, a third person or a fourth person on top of that, then it really starts to sound cha uh, very chaotic. Um, so it's just important, especially over Zoom, to try not to talk over each other because it you're not going to get the your point across. No one's going to be able to hear anything you're saying um, for any of the people talking. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then here, some Zoom camera etiquette. Um, try to find a location where the source of light is directly in front of you, not directly behind you. It just will, it basically creates a silhouette and it actually makes it look like you're in a very dark space, even if you're actually like, you know, let's say you're in a very well lit room because of the window and the sunlight coming in. But if the, the window is directly behind you, it's going to make you look like a silhouette and it's going to make it look like you're sitting in a very dark room. Um, so you want to try to position yourself so that the window is in front of you and that sunlight is hitting your face as opposed to hitting your back. Um, try to have the camera directly in front of you and not tilted from below or above your line of vision. Um, this is, again, just to sh show your face in the best way. Um, if it's too low and it's below your line of vision, um, it's going to kind of make you look more like your chin is going to look larger. Whereas if it's above you and above your line of vision, it's going to make your forehead look larger. Um, so not that this is, you know, like a big, you know, uh, faux pas or something, but just to make yourself look the best, try to have the camera as close to your line of vision as possible. Um, make sure also that your camera doesn't have any objects or dust or grime blocking it. Um, some of us put um, a post-it note over the camera on our computer. So just remember to, to take that off um, and to just you know use maybe a microfiber cloth to wipe off the, the camera lens. Uh, and when I say microfiber cloth, I mean the same kind that you would use um, to clean a pair of eyeglasses, um, that same cloth. Um, if you're not using a virtual background, you can organize and clean any part of your room which is visible to the camera. Because anything behind you is going to be in view of the camera, uh, and your interviewer will see it. So you want to try and look as organized uh, as possible um, and try to have as calm of a background as possible. 
So as you see in my final bullet point here, um, if you do decide to use a virtual background, um, be sure it is a respectful and professional photo and not something distracting or loud. Um, the interviewers uh, will see this image the entire time. So choose something that's easy on the eyes and appropriate. Um, a great example might be a, a photograph that you take of your apartment at its cleanest and most organized. This way, you don't actually have to worry too much about organizing your apartment. You just make sure you do it a few days before, take a picture, and then you put that there so that it looks like you're sitting in your apartment while it's all nice and clean. Um, that's a, a nice little trick that I've uh, heard from a few people. Um, but honestly, if you have uh, a space in your home that um, that is uh, like a, a spot that you can sit where there's not really that much behind you, maybe it's just um, a, a plain wall that's behind you and there's a good source of light directly hitting you when you sit in that spot, I would say pick that spot, especially if it's quiet. Um, you don't... Uh, virtual backgrounds for an interview, it's, you want to, like this says, you want to make sure you're picking something professional and respectful. Uh, and I'm going to jump into, uh, you know, how you turn on a virtual background in a moment. But just, yeah, as far as should you, it's really just depending on the type of interview, um, you know, what you're interviewing for. Are you trying to show a lot of personality for this interview? Uh, is it appropriate to be showing that much personality for this particular interview? You know, you just have to juggle those things case by case, depending on what it is you're looking to do um, or what this job is, I mean. Um, yeah. So there isn't a perfect answer as far as, you know, should you use a virtual background? It's, but it is a delicate one. So I don't, you know, don't pick one lightly just because you think it's a funny picture. The person on the other end might find it inappropriate, even though you find it funny, even if it's something innocent. Obviously, I don't expect any of us to pick something that we thought was inappropriate, but even if we thought it was innocent, somebody else might think it's not innocent. So, you know, you just have to be very delicate with this. Um, this is letting you know, you know, not every device is even capable of doing a virtual background or a, a, a newer feature that's called filters. Um, I don't recommend necessarily using filters for an interview uh, unless you're really comfortable with them because you're basically putting something over you um, and instead of behind you. It's uh, an image that's putting on top of you. Uh, and that could really come across as inappropriate in an interview. So I wouldn't play around too much with filters, but just know when it comes to this feature in general, backgrounds or filters, um, the type of device you're using, you may not even have that as an option. Um, most Android devices don't have uh, the ability to do a virtual background. Uh, so right off the bat, if you're using an Android device, just know that you probably don't even have this option anyway. Uh, and when I say virtual background too, I just want everyone to know if you see my face uh, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Ooh, actually I'm speaking of looking that I have got a little glare now that I saw my face. <laughs> but if you see me, um, the, the image that I have behind me, I have, you know, my community living campaign logo behind me. Um, that's what I'm talking about when I say a virtual background. Um, but this link at the bottom here will list out the, the requirements needed, you know, what your device needs in order to be able to do a virtual background. Um, if you don't remember this link or you're unable to write it down, um, just know that you can go to support.zoom.us and that's directly to the Zoom support page. And I have another slide that brings up the support page for Zoom uh, in a little bit. But if you go there, you can always type in, in the search bar, you can type in virtual backgrounds and you can still find this article that lists all the requirements needed. So you can find out if your device can do virtual backgrounds. Um, if you do decide you wanna use a virtual background on a computer, you would just click the little arrow 
that you'll see right next to, I'm gonna zoom in on these, right next to the start or stop video button, you'll see a little arrow. When you click on that arrow, you'll see a drop down menu and you'll see these options here where it says choose virtual background or choose video filter. And you'll wanna click on choose virtual background and it'll bring you to the next screen where you're able to pick an image to use as a virtual background. Um, on a, a tablet or a smartphone, you're gonna probably have to click on more. You'll see something that says more with three dots on your screen. When you click that, one of the options will say background and filters. Um, again, if you have the type of tablet or smartphone that is capable of doing it, because not all tablets and smartphones are able to do this. Um, computers, you're, it's more likely that you're able to, but if your computer is on the older side, there is also a chance that it might not be able to as well. Um, but yeah, once you, depending on what device you have, once you click on that backgrounds button, you would then be brought to a screen that looks like this. Now, obviously you wouldn't see my face waving at you, um, but you would see in that same square that you can see right now, my image, um, you would see yourself um, because it's a little preview screen. This would automatically turn on your camera so that as you click through different images, you can uh, see what it would look like and you could basically test them out. Um, for an interview, um, I recommend blur might be a really good option because all you're doing is blurring the background behind you. Um, so it's it's not actually adding an image. You're just blurring whatever room you're sitting in. So that might be the, the calmest uh, virtual background to use where you're still sort of, you know, respecting your space. Um, but not doing something very loud that's going to be abrasive to your interviewer's eyes. Um, if you have an image that you want to use that, you know, it's one of the pictures that, you know, is your picture or um, you found it on the internet or, you know, however, um, you would click on this little plus sign. I'm going to zoom in on it so you know what I'm talking about. So there's this little plus sign over here. When you click on that plus sign, you would then have the option to uh, add an image and you can grab that photo from wherever it is in your device. Um, you know, if it's on a computer, you know, you're just going to want to know where, which folder that that photo is living in. Uh, if you're on a tablet or a smartphone, uh, it's going to be wherever your photos are saved is where that device is going to, or I'm sorry, that's is where that photo is going to be. Um, and then when you add that image, it'll then show up in this list down here where we, you see like a bunch of different squares. Um, the first three images, so the, uh, Golden Gate Bridge, this, uh, Blades of Grass, and then there's like the, the planet Earth from a space view, um, those are, uh, stock photos that Zoom themselves have added in. Um, the other images here are actually from the work account that I use, because you can see here at the bottom, there's that uh, community living campaign logo that I'm using right now. Um, and when you have something selected, as you see here in the preview, there's the community living campaign logo. And down here, there's a blue outline around the image. That's how you know that this is the one that's currently selected. So if you click on one of the other ones, the blue outline would move to that other image. Um, and one last thing I wanna say before I move on to the next slide, uh, you wanna make sure that if you're using a virtual background, down at the bottom, you're gonna see these options for have I have a green screen or mirror my video. Uh, I have a green screen. I do not recommend checking this off. Leave it unchecked. If this is checked off, it your device is assuming that you have an actual green screen, like the ones that are used 
um, in the movies when they're doing like a CGI effect in a movie, um, you can actually purchase like a really small one for your room to put up behind you when you're in a, a Zoom meeting. Um, and if you don't have one of those, if you do check off this little box down here, um, you'll see that your virtual background will actually swallow you up. And it's because it doesn't know, it's looking for a big green color. And when it doesn't see it, it just sort of puts the image everywhere. So you don't want to, you don't want to check this off unless you've purchased a green screen, which I know most of us are not going to put money into something like that. Um, mirror my video just means exactly what it's implying. It's going to flip the image to make it look like you're, you're looking into a mirror. Um, so that's personal preference, depending on how you want the view of yourself to be. Um, but that's what, if you have this checked off, your camera will be like a mirror. Um, yeah. Ooh. Now that's um, basically the end of the presentation itself. Um, this is showing you a few ways that you can find more help in the future. Uh, again, this is showing you that support page on Zoom itself. Uh, so if you go to support.zoom.us, you would uh, be able to go directly to the support page on Zoom. And they have a search bar at the top, so you can type in a, a topic or a keyword and search through their articles. Or they have all these different... Uh, topics that you can click on and you can, you know, get getting started would be, you know, a lot of the beginning steps, audio, video, and sharing uh, is some of the stuff we talked about today. Um, meetings and webinars is, you know, how would you schedule your own Zoom meeting? Um, if you want to create a Zoom account, you can click here to get some questions answered about Zoom accounts. Uh, and then they can also break it down based on device. So you have Mac for Apple computers, Windows for Windows computers, Linux for the Linux devices, uh, web for the Zoom website, if you have questions about the Zoom website itself, um, iOS for Apple um, iPhones or iPads, and then for any Android devices. Uh, so you, it breaks it down for you depending on you know what you're using. Uh, and then these here are just uh, some support articles that I found most helpful. So the first one, join a meeting, goes into those steps that I talked about at the beginning of this presentation about each step-by-step -step how to join a Zoom meeting um, if you wanted a further breakdown of those steps. Uh, Zoom best practices, um, that's kind of like the, the etiquette that I was talking about earlier. Um, so this is a great one if you want to look at a few more of these like do's and don'ts uh, about Zoom. And then the final one is the, the link for how to download the Zoom software onto your computer. So if you've been using the Zoom website and you haven't yet downloaded uh, the Zoom software into your computer, um, that's something that you can do uh, here as well. Uh, and then this final slide is just showing you, um, these are the classes that Community Living Campaign have. Uh, and we, you see we have ones Monday through Friday uh, every week. Um, especially now, we would have no plans on ever stopping these classes. Um, you know, even when we're no longer sheltering in place, uh, people will still feel isolated. Um, and it might be difficult to get tech help to everyone in every neighborhood. So we still plan on having these classes, you know, indefinitely. Um, so, and it breaks it down by topic. So you see we have two different Apple classes where you can tune in for Apple help um, on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, on Tuesdays, we have a Zoom help class. On Wednesdays, there's an Android help class. Uh, and then the two classes that just say virtual help uh, they're both uh, general tech help. 
So it's not necessarily a specific topic per se, but you're able to come in with your general tech questions. Um, but all of them are using the same meeting ID. So it's all this meeting ID number here. Um, and with that, um, here I'll stop sharing my screen. And I know we probably have a few questions. Uh, yeah, Peter, there's a, a few in the chat. So the first one from Sarah, do you recommend a newer device for a better picture quality? Is there a low cost device with a good camera? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of, uh, I don't know of one off the top of my head that I can necessarily recommend, but what I will say is um, a great website is cnet.com. C N E T, like C as in uh, cow or cat, uh, N as in Nancy, E as in elephant, T as in Thomas. Um, it's a it's a website where they're not actually selling you anything, um, but it's just a review site for technology. So I recommend that for anyone who's looking um, to to purchase uh, a new device. Um, it's a great one to just like see what people are saying about these different devices and find something that might be either affordable or at least, you know, what you're looking for. Then there was a few technical questions. Um, so there's a couple people that are saying they have new devices, new computers, and they don't have the blur or stock photos. Ah, so I think what you need to do if you don't see the blur um, is that you have to update your Zoom software, I believe. Um, for the, the stock photos, there's actually, um, if you go to the Zoom, uh, I think it's on the support page. Um, but even if it's not, yeah, if you go to the support page <coughs> and search that phrase, stock photos or, or um, virtual backgrounds, even if you just type in virtual backgrounds, one of the, the results is going to show you where uh, on the Zoom website they have all of their stock photos. Um, I don't know the answer for why sometimes the stock photos will show up and other times they're not there for you automatically. Um, Cause on, on mine, they were there. And then for a few of my coworkers, we had this same issue where they're like, I don't have those blades of grass that you have. Um, but if you go on the Zoom website, you do have the option of downloading them and putting them into your Zoom. Um, so if you want one of them, you can always get them off of the Zoom website. But the blur, um, because that's sort of a built-in thing, I believe you just need to update your software. Uh, Peter, uh, could you please show the previous slide? Because uh, with these help desks, uh, meet, oh, yeah. meet an ID. Oh, yeah, here, I'll, yeah, I'll, I can continue answering questions and I'll just, yeah, I'll leave this yes. on here. Um, I know I gave these materials uh, to the library as well, so I know they'll be able to email these out to everyone. So you should be able to get a copy um, through email. Uh, Peter, thank you for that. Um, there's also a question from Morin. Um, they're asking, where do you recommend setting the audio? Setting the audio? Oh, you pro I, I see what you're probably talking about. So um, much like, so just to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about here, um, just like I showed earlier where next to the start and stop video button, um there's that little arrow that you can click on and it'll give you a drop down menu um and that's how you would get to the virtual backgrounds um very similarly uh next to the mute button with the little microphone there's also a little arrow there and um when you click on that one of the options will get, uh, ask you to if you want to go to audio settings um when you're in audio settings um, there's a few things that you can adjust, one of which is sort of like the sound. Um, I honestly, it it varies device to device um, where you want that audio set. 
um, I would recommend making sure it's at the very least closer to the loud side. Don't bring it all the way to the top. There's basically a little range and there's a ball that you um, move back and forth and you're able to adjust the, the volume of your microphone. If you bring it all the way up, it's gonna be very abrasive, the sound. Even if you're talking quietly, it's gonna come across like, like you're screaming. Um, so you don't want it all the way to the top. Um, you're gonna wanna find that sweet spot, but it really varies device to device. But I would recommend bring it closer to the loud side. Don't air closer to the quiet side because it's better to be a little loud and at least they heard you as opposed to being too quiet and then your interviewer is like, can you repeat that? <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for that, Peter. Um, there's no other questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself. Hello. Oh, yes, I have a question. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Bridget. Yes, um, for the virtual background, because I try to uh, use my own photos, uh, some of the photo I, I took as the virtual background, but the, the photo is just similar, like uh, the the uh, the photos there, like Golden Gate Bridge or some nice view, but it didn't, not acceptable. Oh, it, it told you that it, it wouldn't take the photo? I, uh, is that something that the color, uh, um, not that right, something, some reason, because I picked several already, but it's still, yeah, it said the color not match, something like that, and they're not accept all the photos that I took. Um, I'm not sure. It, cause what I do know is that it might be something where if the photo is too large, um, if the file itself is too big, I can see where maybe it would say something like that. Um, I think it says something like colors, colors, yeah. Colors, that I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, what I, maybe, I don't know if you tried to do um, m more than one at the same time, but I would say maybe try adding just one at, at a time. But uh, even if that doesn't help, um, I guess look at what it says the next time you try it read what it says and see if there maybe is a way, um, I don't know what type of device you have, but um, if there's a way to maybe um, edit your photo so that you're either cropping it so that you're making it a little smaller, um, or, or yeah, I'm not really sure, depending on what that message told you. But I do know that sometimes the size of the photo, it might reject a photo because of the size. I haven't heard it rejecting something because of color, so I'm not sure. Mm, okay, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, it wasn't a perfect answer. <laughs> Hello. Hi, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, for an interview, do you recommend, um, or is it okay to use um, earphones? Oh, yes. Um, I would say uh, that might be the way that you could eliminate extra noise entirely. The only thing is you want to make sure, the only reason why I don't put it in here as like a recommendation is because sometimes if we forget that we have the microphone on the, the headset, like kind of against our chest, the entire interview, you might be like having these like clanking noises or scratchy noises. So you just want to make sure that you're very aware of where the microphone is so that you're coming across as very professional to whoever you're talking to. Um, but as long as you're good about, you know, having the, the headset in and not playing with the microphone too much, um, then yeah, that could work out really well for an interview. Mm -hmm. Also, um, my second question is, um, like when I interview, they want to see examples of my drawings. Mm -hmm. Is there a a way that I can do like a slide within Zoom? Uh, what I would recommend is so similar to what I'm doing right now with this presentation, um, you would want to, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it would depend on what, what software you have on your device because you can't create the slideshow in Zoom you can show it to them in Zoom, the same way I'm showing my presentation right now with all of you. 
Um, but you would have to create that slideshow using something else. Um, for this, I used a software called PowerPoint, um, but there's other softwares that do very similar things. Um, and because all you really want to do, or at least what it sounds like you want to do, is um, you're going to have pictures of your artwork and you're going to want to make sure that you're able to just show all of those pictures quickly. You know, you can swipe through them. Uh, so as long as you, like you said, create some kind of slideshow using a different software, um, you can then share your screen uh, and yes, and you'd show them th these pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that, Peter. Uh, we're actually out of time now. Um, so I would like to thank Peter for helping do this presentation on how to do job interviewing with Zoom. Uh, I hope this uh, presentation was very informative and helpful for everyone. Uh, I will be sending out a survey along with the link to the recording and the PowerPoint presentation slides later today. And I really appreciate it if you guys can take your time out of your day to fill out the survey so we can learn to improve our programs. And with that, I think we can enjoy the rest of our days. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, right. everyone. Have Thank a good day, you. everyone. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good luck much. out there. <laughs> Bye.